I'll tell you one thing, the leftists will never win. I'll tell you one area where the weird right-wing bodybuilder, Bronze Age pervert types on Twitter are 100% right and will always be 100% right. Food. They know what's up. Consumption of meat products is much better than consumption of soy products, just in general. Woke up today. Sorry to all the vegans watching. Sorry, sorry for all the triggered vegans watching. I know you might get triggered. <laughs> you might get triggered by my carnivorous habits. By my slaughtering and eating of an innocent bovine creature. Damn, tastes good though. Woke up, woke up, I was going to say woke up this morning. Not this morning. Woke up at 9pm because I went to bed at like 2pm. Woke up at 9pm. Get out of bed. Okay, time to have, I guess, breakfast at 9 p.m. What food is in the fridge? Look through. Oh, there's a steak here that goes off today. I know expiry dates are nonsense, but um, I'm paranoid. I'm a paranoid person. I'm paranoid in general. So expiry dates, I know, like, in my logical part of my brain, I know that if it looks okay and smells okay, even if it's past its expiry date, it's probably okay. But my paranoia is paranoid. So, I looked at this steak, and it goes off today, and I was like, steak? Steak for breakfast? I mean, I mean, why the fuck not? Now, it's not the biggest steak in the world. It's not the biggest steak in the world. Steak is expensive. It's not the greatest high-quality Wagyu A5 beef. It's just a pretty regular steak from a store. Not very big. Um, so, now here's where the right-wing people might get, you know, not so happy with me. It, the, 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 the BAP crowd, is that because it wasn't the biggest steak, I, I put some carbs with it. Um, I I just was like, fuck it, I'll, I'll put it in a bagel. <laughs> I have bagels right here. Bagel will, you know, I just toast it for two seconds. I don't have to, like, you know, boil some fucking potatoes or something. It's easy. Um, now, I was going to do steak and eggs. I didn't end up doing the eggs. But, um... Uh, anyway, so I make, I'm, I'm like steak, you know, pat it dry with, um, paper towel so you get a nice crispy crust, even though it never fucking works for me for some reason, probably because of the surface I'm cooking it on, isn't, I mean I don't know, I don't know why I can never get a really nice crust on my steaks, even though I dry them and salt them appropriately and oil them appropriately, I don't know why I can never get a really good crust on my steaks maybe my, I just aren't, I'm just not getting a high enough heat I don't, I honestly don't know, maybe I don't cook them in a pan Maybe I should cook them in a pan, because I cook them on like a, like a, here, I'll just show you in the kitchen. I'll turn this off. I cook them on like this thing, like a big, what do you call it, like a griddle, I guess? Yeah, to try and get like sear marks, which you would expect would make it nice, but I never get a good crust, I don't know why. Even though it gets really hot, it's like cast iron on the biggest hob. But for some reason, I never get, I never get like a really nice. Uh, anyway, see it. Anyway, thirty seconds each side. If you eat your steak, this is why I'm surprised. Okay, here tangent. Again, while we're talking about right wing people, I'm surprised that people voted for like <laughs> Donald Trump when he has his steaks well done. Like. Who gives a fuck about anything else he does? Who votes for someone who has his steaks well done? Like, that's ridiculous. That's, that, that, you know that person is just a, a borderline and retarded. So, 30 seconds each side. Literally, 35. I timed it on my phone. 35 seconds each side. Flip. Flip. Obviously, salt and pepper is on it already. Bit of mustard. I like a bit of mustard on my steaks. Bagel. Butter. Rest the steak. Butter the bagel. Steak on the bagel. Fucking delicious. Let me tell you. No soy products can compete. No soy products can compete with a delicious steak. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry to, to the greenhouse gases that that cow produced through its life. Um, for all the water it consumed and resources. But goddamn. If... I don't feel good after having a steak, you know. You just, you just when you, when you, 
you feel like it, it's it's not just a, a taste thing, you know. It's not just a taste thing. It tastes good, but it also like it's a different type of energy than you get from like just having carbs for breakfast or vegetables or something. Vegetables are good. Don't get me wrong. But steak, rare. That you, like when you're eating it, you you feel like you're infused with the power of the animal that that was slaughtered. There's this album called Divorce Lawyers I Shaved My Head, um, which everyone says is really good. Um, I've listened to it. I don't think it's that good. Mostly I think the the lyrics are what brings it down a lot. I mean, it's it, the entire album is just finding very on-the-nose metaphors. It, well, at least my interpretation of the lyrics. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but my interpretation of the lyrics is just very, like, flowery but also simultaneously on the nose metaphors for sex and like romantic romantic relationships and stuff uh, which i am not very interested in in that like that's a really boring topic to sing about to me uh and i don't really relate to it because those are not big parts of my life so it's not that interesting of an album to me but i was told that if i watched this documentary about it i might feel differently but i have to verify my age now you might say why not just open it in mpv they fucking patched it. I found out just now when trying to open this video on MPV that Google have fucking patched the fucking bypass. You can't bypass the age verification anymore by using MPV. And I would assume you can't bypass it. I mean, maybe Invidious would work. I'll give it a try after this. But I think I might... I mean, I, do I just not watch this video? Like, eventually I'm going to have to find a video that I really want to watch that's, I have to, I'm just, I'm fucking mad. I'm, I'm mad. I don't want to give you my fucking credit card information, Google. Fuck you. Fuck you. Thankfully, Invidious still works. Let me turn the fucking brightness down. Thankfully, Invidious still works. Damn it, motherfuckers making notifications on my phone. Invidious still works, but how long will this be a thing? How long will this work to bypass it? Who knows? I just want to make a brief point about favourites. Uh, oh, also, by the way, just recorded a video essay, wrote a video essay. Where did that come from? I was going to record it just as I normally do, and then I was like, no, this point is too nuanced and complicated to just freestyle, I have to write it down. So I recorded a video essay, that'll be coming out on Monday. Look forward to it, I think it's pretty good. Um, anyway, I want to talk about favourites, a brief point about favourites. When I say favourites, I mean when you make a list of your favourites in a certain medium, you know, this is something that I do a lot. I've been doing it for many years. All Everyone does it, right? Lots of people, oh, what's your top 10 anime? Oh, my top 10 anime is Jerry Experiment Lane. Uh, I had a sketch, and yeah, yeah, so on. Or like, what's your top 10 albums? What's your t make a topsters chart? This is a common autism thing, is making lists of things, making, making sure people know your favourites. But favourites aren't an innocent concept, unless you're like, uh, I don't know. I don't know who... It, no, I don't think anyone can possibly make real favourites. I genuinely don't think anyone can make real favourites. I, like, I don't think they can. Because it's always social signalling. And that is part of what makes favourites favourites, is that you don't just consider your favourite thing. And people will deny this. People will fucking deny this. People will 100%, they'll say, Oh yeah, other people do that, but not me. No, everyone does it. I do it, you do it, everyone fucking does it. When you think, when you're putting together a favourites list, you do, as much as you want to pretend you don't, you do keep in mind what you think this is going to say about you. Because it reflects on your character and you want it to reflect well. You can't deny that. Now, there's many ways you can go about it. There's, you know, you could be a, like a, you could put what, if you're relatively new to a genre, you might put like, what you're, you perceive as like popular good things you, that you've seen, you know, uh, or you could, um, you know, be subversive and be like, oh, everyone puts these things on, so even though they're good, I'm going to pretend that they're not my favourites because they're, they're so popular and common that I want to seem more unique and individual and so I'm not going to put the popular things on my favourites. This is the approach that uh, I take, is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to put Cowboy Bebop, Mushishi, and, you know, fucking all of this shit on my favourites because everyone has that on. Everyone knows those things are good. It doesn't say anything about me 
right? It doesn't give you any information about the things I like to list that on Mal, because, you know, everyone likes those. Ev no, who doesn't like Cowboy Bebop? I mean, come on. You know what I mean? Like, who doesn't like Mushishi? Mushishi's a fucking great show. There's, there's no really debate about it. Me telling you I like Mushishi doesn't tell you anything about my, te my general taste, because it's just like, oh, here you like something that everyone likes. What I think is important in the favorites list is what are the things that, that you really like, that only you like, that represent something about your character and, you know, some stuff like that. But I digress. In fact, I don't digress, because I kind of, I kind of, I, I don't digress. This is, this is all linked to my point. This is all linked to my point. My point is about Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino is such a weird cultural figure, because he's, like, probably the most popular, like, great director. Maybe Scorsese. Him and Scorsese are, like, the last two, like, great directors who, like, can draw a crowd to their films. Not anymore because of COVID, but you know what I mean. And the thing is that if you ask like film buff type people, film school, cine cinephile type people, like a lot of them will hate on Tarantino, even not like really film buff sc film school type people, but just like people who are consider themselves into film, they will just shit on Tarantino for no fucking reason. For no reason, because, well, here's the, there is a reason, but it has nothing to do with the films he makes, right? Okay, there's also another reason, which is, he was, I don't know much about the situation, so, hey, I'm, 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 I, I, I might be, maybe he did something really bad and I just haven't, I just don't know about it, because I, I never really heard much about it, but I do know that he was buddy-buddy with Harvey Weinstein, so maybe that's a reason to not like the guy personally, but that's not got anything to do with his, you know, films or anything, um, so the reason people don't like Tarantino who are really into film is because what if you say it's because the phrase Tarantino is my favorite director is a very first year film school opinion to have it's a very first year film school opinion to have and no one wants to be seen as a first year film school person no one wants to be seen as you know oh it's a basic opinion it's like when you first get into when you first discover that films can be good you know it's Tarantino you get into Tarantino basically uh, now, I'm not a super, uh, like, hardcore cinephile. I've seen some good movies. I've seen some classic movies. You know, I've, I'm, mm, I'm okayly well-versed well in movies, but movies are not my main medium, right? More like music and anime are my main mediums. I'm somewhat well-versed in movies. I've seen some of the good, like, really good, well-respected films, but I'm not a cinephile by any means compared to, for example, my good friend Young Sai, who is uh, really... Uh, powerful, <laughs> really deep cinephile, knows fucking everything about movies. Genius, absolute genius. Uh, who and so I, I'm nothing compared to him. He will just rant about obscure fucking Iranian directors at me for hours, and like, it will be the most fun you could possibly have. Like, he's he's yeah. I'm not on that level. I well, would never claim to be on that level. Now he likes Tarantino. I don't think he'd put him as his favorite director, but he likes Tarantino. And the thing is, you know. I don't say Tarantino's my favourite director. He's not. I would say if I had to choose a favourite director for films, it would probably be Ozu. Now the thing is, having saying Ozu is your favourite director, that's not a first year film school opinion. That's a second year film school opinion. So I'm slightly better than those guys. Because <laughs> that's like, oh no, you've seen good films, I've seen I've seen Japanese good films, you know, I've seen what this is in black and white. Look at me, look how cool I am. You know, you, you put like Akira Kurosawa or, or Ozu as your favorite, you know, you know what the fuck I'm talking about, or Godard, you, you know, one of those type of things. Um, but the, the thing is, all of those make good fucking movies. I mean, are you going to argue that Kurosawa doesn't make good movies? Are you going to argue that Godard doesn't make good movies? Are you going to argue that Ozu isn't the greatest director of all time? Like, are you going to, are you going to tell me that, that the cinematography in fucking any Ozu movie is not the, just the best that cinematography that's ever been done? You're going to lie if you're going to say that, because you're wrong. Right? But the thing is, Tarantino is one of my favourite directors. You can't... Anyone who says to me that Tarantino is shit, or like, way overhyped, or whatever... Nah, okay, he's a little overhyped, I'll, I'll agree with that. But anyone who says like he's not a, an incredible director, people who don't acknowledge... Like, if you've seen Reservoir Dogs, and you don't think Tarantino is an incredible director, then 
Something's wrong with you. <laughs> Something is wrong. How can you not think that is an amazing fucking movie? I don't understand. I do not understand it. I know people sometimes have moral problems with these films. That's a different thing. A moral problem with the film is nothing to do with a technical problem with the film. Right? Those are, those are two different things. And if you have moral problems with Tarantino films, I don't know, you might, be a, you might be a little bitch. You might be a little pussy bitch baby boy. You might be a little baby little piss boy. You might be a little piss baby. Your arms are like fucking cigarettes or whatever that... You might be one of those. You might you might be a conservative mum from the nineties. You might be you might be a conservative soccer mum from the nineties. If you have if if uh, if the, if uh, watching Hitler get shot in the face is uh, offensive to you. By the way, the most visceral moment, the most viscerally satisfying moment in all of film history is the moment in Inglorious Bastards where they just do a fucking close up of Hitler's face exploding from being mowed down by machine gun fire. How can anyone not love that? Come on. Even if you're a Nazi, you gotta love that scene. Even if you even if you love Hitler, you gotta fucking find that scene to be the most emotionally satisfying thing ever. Come on. The ending of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, also. I mean, come on. How do people not like Tarantino? I don't understand. What is there to not like about him? I'll tell you what there is to not like about him. He's popular. And people don't want to say that they like a thing that everyone also likes. Because it doesn't say anything about them personally. But, fuck you, is what I'm saying. It, because I'm less into film than the super cinema c cinephiles out there, because I'm not and don't claim to be a film buff and it's not part of my identity, I'm not tied down to making my favourite directors and my favourite films and whatever um, you know, reflect a part of my identity. If I really want, I mean, my real favorite director, not film director, but just director overall, is Akiyuki Shimbo. None of you fucking film buffs have ever heard of Akiyuki Shimbo, because he doesn't make movies, he makes anime, uh, right? And, you know, I don't even like all of Shimbo's stuff. Uh, I don't really like the directing in Madoka, for example. I think it's kind of flat and boring. And also, a lot of the directing in things that people will claim he did, like, uh, you've all seen you all, you all know this. I don't have to talk about the Shinonuma and stuff. Anyway, that's my like that's my favorite director of all time, and you guys have never fucking heard of him. So there's my clout. There's my fucking clout. So let me fucking say I like Tarantino. God damn it! I know obscure people, right? So let me say I like Tarantino. You know, I've seen, I've been to a film premiere of a real movie that you've never fucking seen. That was really good, and I forgot what it was called, but it was a good movie, and I went to the world premiere of that movie. So I'm see, I go, I went to film school. Uh, barely. <laughs> I, I know what mise-en-scene is. I know what the cooler shav effect is. I've seen, um, f fucking Seventh Seal. I've seen Metropolis. <laughs> you know, I'm a film, I'm, I have film clout. Uh, that gives me film clout, right? Those things give me film clout. Come on. I've seen Koyaanisqatsi, although film people don't like Koyaanisqatsi. I don't know why. It's a great movie. How can you like Koyaanisqatsi? It's a great fucking film. People are stupid. Speed Racer. Now there's a good movie. Every, if you haven't seen Speed Racer, if you haven't seen Speed Racer, y you're wasting your time watching this. You should be watching Speed Racer. It's such a good film. Speed Racer is such a fucking good film. It's such a good film. It's such a fucking good... It's such a good film. It's such a... On so many levels. It works on so many fucking levels, Speed Racer. It works on so many fucking levels. It's second best film that come out came out after the year 2000. The only film, in my opinion, that tops it is Synecdoche, New York. Second best film to come out after the year 2000, Speed Racer. Yeah. Go fucking watch that shit. It's better than The Shining. Here, see, I can have unpopular film opinions. I don't like The Shining. I think it's boring, not scary, not particularly thrilling or entertaining. Uh, I think Jack Nicholson and uh, Shelley some Duval, Shelley Duval, is that her name? Am I thinking of someone else? I don't know. I'm really bad with names. The acting's great, is what I'm saying. I don't think the film is great. Um, not the child acting, though. He's shit. Uh, but, the, yeah, I, I don't like The Shining. There's my... Hey, if you want a controversial film opinion, that's my controversial film opinion. I, I don't like The Shining. Uh, I like other Kubrick films, but I don't like The Shining. Um... What else is a controversial film? That's really it. I don't really have that many controversial films, but I think Kung Fu Panda is a good film. Is that controversial? I don't know. I like it. Um, I... 
didn't think um I don't know. I don't know what movies people like, so it's hard to say. Oh, I didn't think um I didn't think No Country for Old Men was that good. I thought it was fine, but I didn't think it was a masterpiece. I know everyone thinks it's a masterpiece. I didn't think it was like a uh, the best Coen Brothers film or anything. I thought it was I thought it was a pretty good film, but I don't think it was a masterpiece. Um, do I have any other good hot film takes? Um, probably. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to see if I can find some hot film takes that I have. Let's go on Letterboxd and just see what like films are the most popular ones, and I'll just find ones that I don't like out of the list of the most popular films. That'll be fun, right? That'll be a fun time, fun thing to do. Uh, anything I can like a solid chunk of the top films on I'm on um Letterboxd are just like anime. So we're, we're and they're not even anime films. They're just straight like Nana is on there. That's not even a film, right? That's a series, isn't it? As, as far as I remember. So I'm going to use the IMDb top 250 because I know that one's kind of normy, but fuck it. Uh, Shawshank Redemption, never seen it. Godfather and Godfather 2, great films. Dark Knight, great film. Not the fourth greatest film ever made, but it's a pretty good film. Um, it kind of, in my, okay, Dark Knight, a uh, little bit weak point towards like the beginning of the, like the end of the second act, in my opinion. Like, around that sort of period, like, in the film, it kind of has a bit of a, a downturn. But whatever. 12 Angry Men, I haven't seen. Uh, Schindler's List, I haven't seen. Lord of the Rings movies, they're fine. They're good. Pulp Fiction's great. Good, the Bad and the Ugly's great. Fight Club's great. Forrest Gump is pretty great. It's not amazing, but it's... I mean, it's a, it's a well above average film. I don't think it's the 12th best film ever made. I mean, these are very normy opinions to have on films. Uh, Inception is pretty good. More Lord of the Rings. Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, I suppose is good. The Matrix, great movie. Uh, Goodfellas, great movie. Okay, maybe. Okay, maybe this is this is maybe this is a hot take. Goodfellas is my favorite, like gangster movie. I think it's better than The Godfather and Godfather Part Two. But only like I mean. I just like it more. I wouldn't say it's better, like, on a technical level. I just like the story and the characters more. Uh, Seven Samurai. Love it. Seven. Love it. Silence of the Lambs. Great. City of God. Haven't seen. Wonderful Life. Haven't seen. Life is Beautiful. Haven't seen. Um, a New Hope. Pretty good movie. Saving Private Ryan. Not that good. It's fine. Like, it's maybe like a 7 out of 10. Spirited Away. Amazing. The Green Mile. I haven't seen it. Interstellar. Really falls apart in the third act. Everyone knows that it falls apart towards the end. But the first two thirds are a good movie. Parasite. Haven't seen it. Not interested. Uh, Leon. Great movie. Harakiri. Never seen it. The Usual Suspects. Uh, I saw half of it and then I went and did something else. Pianist. Haven't seen it. Okay, here we go. I haven't seen any of the popular movies. Back to the Future is overrated, but it's also... I mean, it's a good movie. No, I can't even lie. It's not even overrated. It's a good movie. Terminator 2 is a great movie, obviously, amazing. I'm amazed Robocop hasn't showed up yet, because I would, I would have expected Robocop to be pretty high on this list. Robocop is an amazing movie. Modern Times I haven't seen. Psycho, I, I actually don't think I've ever seen Psycho. I'm sure it's good. Lion King sucks. I don't know why people like fucking Disney animated movies. They're all shit. American History X I haven't seen. City Lights I've never even heard of. Gladiator, uh, I, again... I think I saw, like, the first... I don't know. I, I, I think I saw on TV or something. I just caught a bit of it. Uh, the Departed. The Departed. <laughs> Whiplash is a good movie. Grave of the Fireflies. Come on. It's cheap. Uh, like, it's cheap to put it as a good movie. Just because something makes you cry and it's really, like, fucking pulls at your heartstrings like Schindler's List doesn't mean... It's the best movie of all time. This is what you need to look at fucking novels. See, novels have been around for longer than all of these other mediums. Books have been around for longer than all these other mediums. And if you look at all of the novels that are considered to be, like, the best of all time right now, right? You know, I'm talking Ulysses. I'm talking Don Quixote. I'm talking uh, uh, fucking Gravity's Rainbow. You know, all of these things. 
They're all comedies. All of those books are comedies. The best of the best of what is it like touted as the best novels of all time are all fucking comedies. No other medium is mature enough to where they've realized that comedy is the be the hardest genre to perfect. And so everyone thinks like, oh, thing to make you cry is the best. No thing to make you cry must be good because it make me cry. Firstly, I never cry at fucking movies. I haven't cried. I just am incap incapable of crying at media. Uh, so that never fucking affects me. And secondly, it's so fucking what? It's just cheap. It's cheap. It's like a jump scare. Just make someone cry. You know, key the fucking visual novel studio. Have a literal formula that works to make someone cry every time. Like, it's it's not actually that impressive. I mean, it's kind of impressive. And Grave of the Fireflies is a good movie. But, like, like you know, just because something makes you cry, just because it's Schindler's List or whatever, doesn't mean doesn't automatically equal best movie of all time. Most people crying is not the same as most best movie. Uh, Casablanca, great, obviously. Once Upon a Time in the West is amazing. Rear Window's good. Cinema Paradiso, I haven't seen. Alien is great. Apocalypse Now is great. Memento is really good. Best Christopher Nolan movie. Raiders of the Lost Ark is great. Great Dictator is amazing. Uh, the Lives of Others I haven't seen. Django Unchained is great. Paths of Glory I haven't seen. Sunset Boulevard I haven't seen. Wally -E is good for the first little bit, and then it gets bad when they go into space and stuff. Uh, the Shining I already talked about. I don't think it's that good. Joker I haven't seen, uh, but it's probably pretty good. Witness for the Prosecution I haven't seen, but I've been meaning to watch it for ages. Avengers Infinity War. Get this fucking shit out of here. Terrible movie. Uh, Doctor Strange Love is a fucking amazing, obviously. Uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Again, been meaning to watch that for ages. Hamilton, the musical. Get that shit fucking out of here. Hamilton's awful. I saw, I, I've never, like, I, I just assumed that it would be good because everyone thinks it's good. So I randomly, like, ended up watching, I was, I was curious. I ended up, like, I went on YouTube and ended up watching, like, one of the raps from Hamilton. They're fucking awful. <laughs> They're not good at all. They're terrible. The rapping, it's not very good at all. Like, it's 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 so basic. Like the rhyme schemes and stuff, so basic. And it's yeah, it's not good. I know why people like it. Princess Mononoke, really good. Maybe my favorite Ghibli movie. Uh, Old Boy, really good. Once Upon a Time in America, really good. Your Name, not very good. Uh, maybe a three out of ten. It's kind of shit. Dark Knight Rises is fucking awful. Also, like, a 3 out of 10. Uh, Aliens. I actually have never seen Aliens. Again, I've been meaning to watch it forever. Coco. Haven't seen. Das Boot. Haven't seen. But I know the plot, and it sounds pretty cool, but I don't... I haven't seen it. Capernaum. I have never even heard of this movie. Um, interesting. High and Low. Haven't seen. Avengers Endgame. Get this shit out of here! American Beauty, good movie. Toy Story, probably the best Disney movie. Animated movie, I would assume. I have thought about it, and I am not going to go through all 250 movies saying haven't seen it, or good movie. That's not good content, so I'm going to stop. Um, but, I will say, make End of Ava higher on this list please, because it's, it's better than most of these movies. I also make Tokyo Story higher on this list. Also make uh, Your Name go away from this list, because that is a terrible film. I shouldn't have started recording, because I haven't quite structured this thought in my mind, so this might not be told in an optimal manner. So, Review Bar. Right? You guys know Review Bar. He's like, pretty famous at this point. Um... Do you know the story behind Review Bar, how we got his name, why he blew up? I'm sure you do, but in case you don't, what happened is there are people, he was discovered by people on bodybuilding forums and on 4chan's fit board, and uh, they used to watch him uh, to sort of vicariously consume fast food, and that's how we got the name Review Bra. you know, bra is kind of a bodybuilding meme. They like to make fun of themselves as if they're like meatheads. If you want to see a perfect example of bodybuilder parody meathead humor, check out the channel Bro Science for Life. Uh, but but yeah, so they they coined his name as Review Bra, 
and they used to watch him because obviously they're all on strict diets eating only rice and chicken every day and they used to watch him so that they could sort of vicariously see fast food being consumed and sort of get some element of enjoyment out of it even though they'd chosen for their personal lifestyle to you know forego fast food in order to dedicate themselves to bodybuilding or fitness my point being the donut man can and dummies day out is to hikikomori's what review bra was to fit and bodybuilders because i have you know i get to ex vicariously experience these crazy adventures crazy and low like otaku adventures low brow like no money but like not in like a fake no money way where like you know like backpacking who are like they're all rich posh people and they just like backpack around the world and pretend to be you know poverty tourism i believe is what they call it uh, where they like go to a poor place and they pretend that they're poor when really they're not in any real danger because they have plenty of money and you know etc etc not none of that like real authentic travel like an ex exploration where you are like you know, Dummy's Day Out has almost died multiple times on his journeys, and yet for some fucking reason, because he's just a god, just keeps doing it, and no one knows about him. Uh, it's crazy. So I called him Dummy's Day Out. That's the name of the show. I, his name's Donut Man Can. Uh, that would be like calling the report of the week running on empty food reviews. Um, another parallel there. They both have a channel name and, and a show name. Anyway, that's really the point, is that, like, you know, just like bodybuilders were enjoying watching uh, Review Bra eat all of this fast food, but, and, you know, they, they might have been like, man, I wish I could do that. But deep down, they know they don't want to do that. They've made the choice for themselves that they want to live a different lifestyle and forgo those, that sort of aspect of life. Same thing for people who like to stay indoors all the time. I'm hesitant to call myself a hikikomori because, um, well, you know, people get really tetchy about that term like if, if you haven't stay if you haven't pissed in bottles every day for the last 12 years then you're not a real hikikomori i don't know people are very tetchy about that sort of term but um people who like to stay inside all the time are like me um i can get the sort of vicarious experience of being out in the in the real world traveling experience in the harshes of the Californian desert or climbing a Japanese mountain you know all of these great things that he does I get to experience that vicariously and I can think to myself man that would be so cool to do but I know deep down I've chosen put on purpose a lifestyle where I don't do that because I know in reality I value other things much more than I value that in fact I'd probably fucking hate it I would probably absolutely hate to live the lifestyle that donut man can lives if i did i like if i if i was and this isn't even an impossible situation if i was in a similar sort of situation where it's like i'm broke i've got no money i have to live you know with a, in very very few means i wouldn't do what he does which is move around i would most likely find you know spend a while finding a nice spot in the woods to set up my camp and i would live there forever or something like that um you know i, I probably wouldn't take any risks because I'm I'm not a very risk taking person. I like to get my my type three fun or my, my hard fun, you know, there's hard fun and there's soft fun. I like to get my hard fun from doing things that are only time risks, not life risks. You know, I like to, to do my type three fun by installing a weird operating system on a computer which gets me very frustrated for a few days and then when I finally do it I guess this is more like type 2 fun then when I finally finish it I get the experience of yes I finally I did something I learned stuff about computers and I've grown as a person and whatever but if anything goes wrong then all I've risked is you know the time I put into it it's not as bad as video games which are really all you risk is like there's no real risk at all they're not really type 2 they Maybe some, you know, MMOs are, but uh, most video games are designed specifically to not be too frustrating. And the ones that are designed to be frustrating are, are you know, you can pretty much name them. There are a few of them that are specifically designed to be frustrating as part of the artistic message. But um, life isn't that way. Life doesn't give a fuck if it's designed poorly. Uh, the world does not give a fuck if it is uh, dangerous, uh, harmful, boring and not fun, whatever. Um... I, you know, I, I don't like that. 
I, you know, <laughs> Linux is like halfway through. Linux or computers, whatever I spend my time doing, you know, like marathoning anime that I don't really like just because I want to have it on my mouth. This is some like a similar type of thing where it's like, you know, just or reading a book that's like, I just, well, books are boring to me. Or going on walks as I was trying to do before I got tendonitis. I'm hoping my tendonitis is better now because maybe when the weather improves, I'm going to start going on walks again and that'll be good. Honestly, uh, or, you know, learning stuff, whatever. I get my, what I'm trying to say is I get my hard fun in other places. But my hard fun is not as hard as his hard fun. And that's why I like, I like to live vicariously. Because I've chosen that that I would that that would be bad for me. I would I would just be I mean I'm already an anxious wreck most of the time. So doing that sort of thing is just gonna be horrible for me. You know. It's hard enough for me to go out in the middle of a city. Uh, you, you understand what I'm trying to say, right? It's it's a vicarious living it's Review bar. He's review bar for outside. He's review bar. Well, review bar is for fast food. Donut man can is for outside. By the way, because I actually just remembered, I have more subscribers than him. So if you're watching this clip, go fucking subscribe to Donut Man Can. Way better YouTuber than me. One of my favorite YouTubers. Look him up. The Donut Man Can, or look up Dummies Day Out. Um, if I remember, I'll put a link in the description to his channel. Really cool YouTuber. Um, he goes, I don't know what he does, he just sort of explores, he just wanders around. Right now he's just basically like cycling through the Californian desert and he has his like Kuroneko figure with him. He's just vlogging himself, just like homeless, biking through the California desert. I don't know, it's great. It's the comfiest shit ever. <laughs>